This MZ Mine video is about the pre-processing steps that I um, use for ion identity networking. And so we already took the first step. So we ran a very basic batch uh, where we import the raw data, um, run mass detection, and then create chromatograms. We deconvolve the chromatograms into separate features. And then we ran 13C deisotoping on the feature lists and aligned all the deisotope feature lists into one aligned feature list. And this aligned feature list uh, has all the different samples here. We can see the detection state and we can also see the duration of the peaks and so on. So we can read out some of the uh, data about our um, features. And the first steps which we are going to take are um, in this batch file here. So we are going to apply some different filters to then go to meter correlate, which is the first step of ion identity networking. So first, we're going to filter the features. So we're going to go to the peak filter. And here we have uh, the duration filter and the number of data points filter. And I use both. Uh, but both only in a half half of a way. So the duration only filters out the um, length of the peak of the peak. So this is for the upper end of the um, peak shape. So we limit the peaks to uh, two minutes here uh, to not be too restrictive. And then we um, limit the features to at least three data points. So we say that we need uh, three data points to um, detect a peak in retention time dimension as a peak. And this is very, this is quite low, but it always depends on your settings for your MS, MS uh, experiments and MS1 experiments. And so from this filter, we go to the duplicate peak filter and the duplicate peak filter just runs on the feature list and tries to find duplicates uh, which have the same retention time and same mass to charge ratio and so we use the new average. So it just runs on the average uh, MZ and retention time. And then uh, we can set the window quite narrow because um, we only want to filter out duplicates, which are actually duplicates. And especially if you run um, gap filling. So if you have some um, yellow dots here, so um, gap filled features, uh, the peak filter will filter out the bad gap filled features. And then the duplicate peak uh, filter uh, will also filter out duplicate rows even better after gap filling because the two duplicates get closer together. And the last filter is the peak list rows filter. And this is quite important because with this filter, we can say that we want to have at least one feature per row. This is very important because the peak, the, uh, the peak filter might have deleted all the features in a row. And then the the row is obsolete, but it's still there, it's still empty. So we need to remove it in this step. And if you have run a batch of files of raw data uh, files here, and you have duplicates or triplicates, then you can set this to two or three, or if you expect the feature to be in at least two or three samples, you can always set this higher to have better results. And then the minimum peaks in an isotope pattern, this is also very important because we only want to uh, look at features which have an isotope pattern. And so we can set this to two or even to three if we want to just see uh, the most abundant features. And of course, uh, you could also set up a retention time range. So um, if you say the first half a minute or one minute is um, not worth to look in, or your gradient is stopping at like 15 minutes or whatever, you can just set up a range here. And then this range is going to be applied. But we just don't use it for now. And then we can apply all these filters to the uh, feature list. And then we uh, will get better results later on. And just a first glance and the next video is going to uh, focus on meter correlate. And then we're going to do the ion identity networking. So uh, meter correlate. 
Um, here it's very important also to look at the features. So first of all, we have the um, we have different grouping parameters, and these grouping parameters are going to be uh, more restrictive or less restrictive, but it really depends on the quality of your MS1 data. So if you uh, haven't acquired too many MS1 scans, uh, for example, if you acquire like five MS2 scans for every MS1 scan or your cycle time is just very high and your uh, chromatography is very fast, uh, so the peaks are very narrow, it, it is hard to um, filter filter out the like do a good grouping and so you have to definitely look into your data but so first of all retention time tolerance if your chromatography is very good you can go higher here so you can just set it up to something that is definitely going to include all features that originate from the same molecule and then uh, we can use the minimum height and noise level um, for the uh, correlation grouping. So if we go to correlation grouping, uh, we can set up the minimum data points um, that we need for a correlation. And then we uh, can also set up the minimum data points and an edge. So if we have the rising edge and the falling edge of a peak, uh, we, de we need at least two data points here on both edges. And so um, the minimum data points for the correlation does also mean that you do need five data points on a feature to be correlated with another feature. And then we have the measures, and I think uh, Pearson is the best here because it's more restrictive than uh, cosine. And so we go for uh, Pearson. We have the minimum feature shape correlation. We can set it up quite high if you're... Uh, chromatography uh, allows like acquires many data points we can set this higher and then but 85% or maybe even 90% for some cases is going to be uh, quite good and then we have the feature height correlation and we can always apply the feature height correlation if we have multiple samples um, so if we have multiple samples this is just going to look for each feature is just going to look in the samples and then just try to see if uh, m plus h and m plus sodium are rising in the same in the same way so let's say in the second sample um, m plus sodium is um, 10 times higher than in the first sample then we assume that m plus h should also be higher because um, the molecules should be in a, in a higher abundance in this sample and so we can set this to a low um, correlation, like 70 or something. And this should be uh, totally fine. And it's just um, a non-restrictive measure here. But if, you're, if you don't have too many data points, so if you don't come to, like if you don't have five data points on a, on a feature, I wouldn't apply correlation grouping. And then I would go lower with the retention time tolerance to be just a bit more restrictive here. Not too restrictive, but just a bit more restrictive. In the end, the groups are just going to be used for iron identity networking to find different adducts and different ions of one molecule. And so the groups don't have to be perfect, but it's good to exclude some of the features to not just create networks out of nothing.